Hello, welcome sisters. This is Johnny Tadisiza, your family lifestylist. Welcome to our Facebook Live class all about jade eggs. I have been not planning to do this session because um, every time I did this in the past, I was in trouble by Facebook and it was only notified recently to me by my um, um, team that my video got removed and I have done this class before I think it was six or seven months before and got removed and uh, in the meantime I have had few of you asking me about the process of yoni egg and what it is and how to buy how to use how to uh, you know how to get started so hey Emma <laughs> so lovely to see you here live it's been a long time so um, so here I am once again, and um, I will this time remove this video before Facebook does that to me. <laughs> hey, Amanda, you are here not doing Tai Chi. <laughs> um, but I will keep the replay available for, um, I think, uh, until the end of this week, pretty much. And, and I will voluntarily remove this from Facebook so I don't get in trouble. Um, yeah, so those of you who know, um, who have been sharing this journey of exploring femininity, you know that uh, I have shared before uh, a few times in the past, in the last one year, um, that I have been banned from Facebook for using the word yoni, um, for uh, using um, the word menstruation, blood, and all of that. So I was put in a lot of trouble <laughs> um, because of that. Um, by the way, if you're watching, please drop in and say hi or hello and uh, interact. I would love to. Um, as I said, it's all about uh, JDAX and I would love to answer questions here. Use this as an opportunity to ask any questions that you may have as I'm sharing at any time. Um, yeah, so as we begin, I would like to know which one are you here? Uh, because I know we are a variety of women uh, who are um, interested in this topic or are nervous about this topic, new to this topic, or a, a practitioner even uh, want to go to the next level of how to use it. And so, um, so I am curious to know um, if you are, if you have never used it, and if you are curious to find out what this um, this whole concept of jade eggs is about, if you are that, or if you have a jade egg and you have never used it, or it's just been sitting on your altar and you haven't, you know, gathered the courage, because I know so many women, they 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 buy the uni eggs and then they just keep it for one beautiful day that never has arrived so far. So is that you? Or is it you who have practiced it and would like to practice more? Would like to learn more techniques, uh, more processes, more um, more rituals around it, more practices, more different kinds of practices, because there is a lot of lot of lot of practices available. And or um, or if you are one of those who is scared to use them, you know, you've used, you've heard those rumors or those those um, adverts or news articles where they have shared with the doctors, the gynecologists share about how uni eggs can be the most damaging thing for you, for your vagina and da da da. So I'm really curious which, where do you stand? And there it is not out of any judgment. So please feel free to share. I know this is a very vulnerable topic. And I am feeling very vulnerable to even talk about it. As I said, like I am nervous. <laughs> I just hope that um, my 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 um, my Facebook live <laughs> just goes normally. <laughs> but also, I'm um, I understand that this is a vulnerable topic for a lot of us, and it's not easy probably to share um, in open. But I also want to remind you that um, that. It's my intention to to hold the safe space, and I am sending this energetic safe um, safeguard of this blue golden light um, around this gathering right now. Even if you're watching the replay, 
if you find yourself feeling hesitant and you have any questions, you can send me in the personal message. But it'll be best if it is it is here so other sisters can also see, relate to you, maybe you know, um, send you support or maybe gather courage from you. Hmm? So that's what this space is about. So there is no judgment. And I am also really strict about somebody who comes from the place of judgment to, to tell them off. I am very good at it too. <laughs> so so this is the space for you. Hey, Emma says, have an egg for ages, but don't know how to use it. Mm. <laughs> yes. Um, and this is the category of women that I know mostly about. We, we, we buy the egg and then we just keep it because... Um, it, it, we have never come come to start using it in actuality. Laura is here. I've never used one, and very curious. I would like to try. Great, Amanda. I'm a user. <laughs> Mine's in now. <the> <laughs> Amanda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've used mine twice, but didn't really know what I was doing. Slept with it overnight, hoping it will help with libido and menstrual symptoms. Yes, that is one good way to begin. And what actually puts a lot of women uh, from this practice is that uh, you use it for the first time or the second time, and you don't feel anything. You don't understand what is going on. You don't feel it at all. And, and then you think that, okay, I don't know what I'm doing right, or if it is working or not working. And the reason is pretty much that um, it is an alien thing to your your internal body. So it takes time for your internal systems to recognize that, that too. So, but every time you use it, it does the amount of work that is um, required for you to receive in that moment. So, so it doesn't work for you. It hasn't uh, done any effects. It helps in a lot of energetic level as well. Hey, Kathy. I know. <laughs> We've been talking about it like what, since last year? <laughs> Lovely to see you, sister. So, jade eggs. Um, first of all, I want to say that I will be using the word yoni uh, because that makes me feel uh, connected to, to my gentle system. And yoni is... The Sanskrit word for for our um, our beautiful sacred portal that is what it means and it means gateway to higher spiritual realms and this is what yoni eggs um, can be a tool to a gateway to higher spiritual realms and um, the yoni when we say vagina it does not include um, the entirety of yoni because yoni means vagina and the vulva because what you have down there is just not vagina vagina is just a part of it the whole but then there is the vulva to it as well so so it is really interesting that we women do not even know our anatomy very well you know we think that that is the vagina but the vagina is part of the yoni <laughs> just not it so what are yoni eggs? Pretty much these are um, crystals, uh, egg-shaped crystals that are used to insert in your yoni. And um, as I said, like yoni, there are ne different names that you call. Um, some people like to say pussy, some people. Uh, I feel connected uh, with the word yoni because um, through this uh, practice, I have made a deeper connection to the sacredness of what it is. And uh, it makes me feel connected. So it is pretty much um, um, egg-shaped crystals. The yoni eggs are pretty much the egg-shaped crystals that um, you use to insert in your yoni, pretty much. And um, and in this class, I will be talking about jade eggs in particular, and um, I will also explain why. But um, yeah, that's that's where I want to begin with. So um, interesting that you are sharing. Am I sharing that? help with libido and menstrual symptoms. So this is pretty much, I like to say, um, is a forbidden practice. And it is actually a forbidden practice, I feel, because every time I have come out of, uh, with this topic on Facebook, I was forbidden from Facebook too. So this ancient practice is still considered forbidden, looks like, in different realms. But um, to, to look back, where it comes from is from, from, from Chinese uh, empire, which is dated uh, more than 5,000 years ago. And it used to um, be practiced as part of the Taoism 
um, um, I would not call it religion, but this was their belief system. Uh, and what interesting thing happened is that 5,000 ago, years ago, so Taoism was very much um, practiced in, in the Chinese empire. And Taoism was this uh, set of beliefs uh, which at that time was quite advanced, was, uh, uh, and you know, we're talking 5,000 years ago, it was quite advanced and um, it was very different from the other um, religion that we've been taught, um, specifically because Taoism considered sexuality to be part of spirituality. And so the beliefs of Tao, the Tao, is pretty much inclusive of our sexuality, which um, the patriarchal religion have somehow suppressed. We've, um, the religion has um, forced or forced out uh, sexuality as something that is uh, um, a kind of a sin. Yeah. Um, so, so this was a practice at that time developed by the, the royal king. I think his, he was called the Yellow Emperor. I don't know why, but this Yellow Emperor guy, he was, so let me just go back to some uh, story time. Yeah? So this Yellow Emperor guy, he was very, um, what do you call this, futuristic in his mind. He had big visions for his empire. He was one of the very famous uh, rulers at that time. And what he did was like he, in his empire, he created um, different um, sets of departments, let's say, <laughs> because that's the closest word I could use right now. Different sets of departments. He, he, he employed people to become part of different types of departments based on their speciality so that they can go and discover the bestest of methods for them to prosper. So they, he made departments like herbal medicines where there were specialists of in, in the community coming together and working with all those herbs and essence and all those things that can help recovery using herbal medicines. Then there were different departments like the silk industry where um, experts were coming together and experimenting about you know how to get the best silk and the, you know he wanted the best and he employed the best people. Then there was the agriculture department as well that, um, that studied and experimented with best practices for um, the best food that they can grow at the time. And since the Taoist teachings uh, believed sexuality to be part of the spirituality, and like, as I said, very current religion, um, he um, also deployed a department. Um, uh, and this, this consists of three females, three fem female advisors to, to come up with a practice that can help um, women and men um, cultivate their sexual energy to access higher levels of spirituality. And, and then these three female advisors then started working on different practices. They were making documents, they were using and you know stones and all of that. And somehow um, this practice was developed and then they presented it to the king. And, um, and then of course they presented it to the king and the queen. And, and this practice was only shared in the royal family so that the queens were the only ones who could access this, this, um, the benefits of this process so that they can have this uh, you know, long life and um, the glow, the everlasting beauty and the health. And the kings could benefit it, uh, from it by performing conscious sexuality, uh, the hero's gamos process. Yeah? Um, and, and anyone who actually leaked this information from this royal uh, family was killed, pretty much. And this is why it was called a forbidden practice. And it is really interesting that um, this practice then became, um, then was brought in the West um, by Mantachia, who is a very uh, well-known um, Taoist teacher, is one of the um, um, oldest one alive, I should say. Um, and he brought it to the West, I think it was like 60s or something like that. But now this information is becoming more and more available um, to us, to the normal people. And it is really interesting that um, it is still considered as, as some kind of like a taboo thing because I know some women, they, they have this and they want to practice it, 
but they feel really embarrassed about it or they feel really embarrassed to even share this with um, their partners. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> let me know how you're finding this. Because, and um, yeah, um, I want to, as I said, I want to keep this as interactive. So um, yeah, so it's still kind of like a, a bit of a taboo topic because, you know, wow, it is the stone. And I remember myself, you know, when I, when I uh, started practicing this, uh, when I, I brought this, um, this stone home, so I went for an initiation um, uh, and ceremony. And after that, I went to meet my mom and I had this stone with me and she asked me, what is this stone? <laughs> what is this? What do you do? Like, do you, it's too big for a necklace. <laughs> and I was like, uh, uh, it's nothing, it's nothing. <laughs> And then I did the same with my husband. I couldn't tell him like I was doing this. And, you know, it took me really <laughs> some practice um, and some more acceptance to, to finally be able to start talking about it to even my husband. So, so yeah, there is, and, and there is a lot of um, misinformation as well about this topic. Um, when I first, learned about um, the JDEC practices. I learned it through, uh, with, from an expert. Uh, her name is Saida Disile. And um, she, she has been um, doing this work and she, she, she taught us how to do it. And then it was in one of the priestess ceremony in, in Bali where I got the experience of actually um, initiating myself into this JDEC. And um, I must say it was really weird experience because we were in a circle of 20 women and I was like, no way she is asking us to put that in our, inside of our vagina. Like all of us are gonna do this together. Is it true? <laughs> but it was a really weird experience. It, everything happened so organically and um, a lot has changed for me since then, which is why I, 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 I talk about this, I share this with, with, with the women and um, it excites me. <laughs> it really excites me to, to talk about this. Um, it is a very restorative process. It's a deeply restorative practice and it is a perfect practice to, to sometimes also get, Help, me, help you to come back to yourself from a busy day. Um, uh, I suggest usually if you are a beginner to, to pretty much practice at least once or twice a week. And uh, I know sometimes you may get busy, but at least once a week is a really beautiful way to spend time with your, um, with your yoni egg because what it also shows is your care for this sacred portal within you. And if you say that you do not have time for this, or you not have interest for this, um, it's, it's a question that you need to ask yourself much more seriously, like really. <laughs> so um, for me, it was, let me read some comments. Yeah, I sleep really well after using mine. Yes, me too. In the beginning, I didn't know, as Emma said earlier, I didn't feel anything. Nothing was happening. And my, my, my teacher at that time, she was saying, use this muscles and left and right and squeeze and da, da, da. I couldn't do anything. And I was literally, I was coughing. I was coughing all the time. And throughout the in initiation process, I was coughing like crazy which is when she actually also explained um, the connection that the yoni has with the throat chakra is that um, that it is it comes in the same meridian a lot of us who feel very repressed in our yoni will also have a very repressed throat chakra we'll also have this um, this um, feeling of repression of not expressing ourselves or not knowing how to express ourselves not able to stand up um, in our own authenticity even and i was pretty much a case like that which i didn't know when i began to cough like crazy 
and um, it was a very slow journey of actually waking up those internal muscles within me. So Emma, you you are doing perfectly fine. <laughs> hey, Belle. <laughs> Postnatal healing, yes, yes, exactly. Congratulations, sister, for delivering this beautiful daughter. So for me, the JDEX, um, JDEX helped me to to the reason i started using it is because i was going through a st stage of um, a broken marriage at that time um and I i'm still with the same <laughs> same husband but at that time we were in a phase of a very broken marriage there was a lot of anger there was a lot of resentment there was a lot of um love hate relationship with the sex as well um we just could not understand um, how to um, how to receive. I think we did not understand how to give, how to receive, and it became like a blame game, and it was very hurting. There was a day when um, my husband came to me and he said that I no longer desire you, and um, that broke my heart, and I really didn't know what to tell him because I didn't know what I was doing wrong. I thought I was doing all the right things. So that kind of knocked me off my grounds, knocked me off my confidence, and especially my sexual confidence. When, when somebody tells you that I don't desire you, I don't find you attractive anymore. And I was like, what? What am I supposed to do? So, so it was really hard. And uh, for me, this process was, um, coming over that guilt, that resentment, and understanding my pleasure, understanding my sacredness, understanding how I can love myself deeply, even though I feel hurt, even though um, I feel rejected. Um, and all then, all the past um, trauma started to show up, all the things that never worked out in my <clears throat> relationship started to come out and all of that was making me a big mess so this is when i went for this process and it helped me to 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 release all of that you know moment by moment time by time um didn't happen like first second third use but yes um i was feeling the difference with constant practice and as i, I like to say that this is a spiritual practice and it is a practice so you got to practice it, yeah? not going to use it and keep it. It is a practice. So we got to take that word um, really um, seriously. Um, hey, Ormila is here. <laughs> so why JDEX? Now, um, as, a, so, um, as I'm sharing my story, I would love to um, be witnessed, first of all. And also, um, I encourage you to, to feel free to share if there is something that is coming up for you in any moment, okay? So, jade eggs. Why jade eggs? Yes, this is an important question because there are so many different crystals of um, eggs available, of the yoni eggs available. So, why jade egg? Why do I have to start with this stone, this dense stone? Now, um, as I explained earlier about this, um, the origin of this practice during those, um, uh, the Yellow Emperor time, 5,000 years ago, at that time, the jade was considered as a very valuable stone in, in, in that, uh, during that time, um, more valuable than gold because it had a very balanced energy. And uh, in Taoism, uh, even the yoni, because yoni is a Sanskrit word, yeah? Um, but um, the vagina, uh, the yoni, sorry, in Taoism is called the jade fountain. If you actually uh, refer to the Taoist uh, terminology, it's called jade fountain because it was this precious thing. As I said, like the yoni means uh, a sacred portal, a gateway to higher spiritual realms. So in Taoism, it meant a jade fountain, the, the precious thing. So naturally, for those experimented ladies, um, jade, egg was the jade was the first uh, element to try with. 
and um, it is used to attract love. Um, this was considered like a very sacred crystal because of many other reasons. First of all, it has a really strong density, uh, very, a strong strength and a non-porous nature. So it's quite safe to put it inside the vagina as compared to even rose quartz. You see the rose quartz are not as strong. A lot of crystals are not as strong and um, they have different denser, density. So you don't want to take the risk. Now, I'm not saying that it may just crash inside your vagina, but um, it may, yeah? I mean, you only want the best for your yoni, isn't it? Um, so it is a very non-porous um, stone. And uh, it is also really important that um, you use a really good quality stone. There is plenty of fake things available in Amazon and eBay and all the websites. So you have to be really careful of where it is sourced from because you don't want um, fake things inside your yoni. Yeah. But the, also there are other um, healing properties of this jade egg is pretty much because of its color and the density, it acts as this healing crystal that activates the liver. So this color, the jade color is associated with the healing of the liver. So when you, your liver is, um, is healthy and fully functional, you're, you have life force energy in you. So when you, again, when we practice different Taoist movements, along with um, the jade egg when it's inserted in you or or not when you do those Taoist practices embodiment feminine embodiment practices um, a lot of it is about re raising the energy in your liver so that your life force energy is is renewed so your liver is pretty much a, a, like this um, generator in your body for your life force and um, there are also different uh, properties like it enhances creativity and one of the also good things about this jade egg is that it is a very warm crystal so what it does is that it can quickly adapt to your body's temperature so you know like when you hold a crystal it is cold yeah and you don't want cold things inside your yoni <laughs> it doesn't feel good but but um it quickly adapts to you as soon as you insert it in it quickly adapts to your body's temperature so you don't feel uncomfortable and um for a lot of beginners who don't know anything about or, or who are beginning and they may have let's say um, a lot of sexual trauma or um other uh, like um uh, are some repressed energy, anger, resentment, and all of these kind of emotions that are stored in our um, pelvic area because that's where it gets stored for us women. Um, this is a very um, gentle stone to work with because whatever you put in there gets magnified. Yeah. So when you put this 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 healing stone, which has this very balanced energy and its high vibrational uh, nature and um, activating your uh, liver um, it only increases amplifies what it, it's in there so when you put um, uh, what do you call this um, rose quartz for example when you put rose quartz it amplifies the emotions around love for you and a lot of people have a, a lot of tra trauma around that so obsidian is also another one. It's a really nice black um, colored jade, uh, sorry, egg, yoni egg. And it is used to also for uh, working with our dark feminine energy, our psychic energy, uh, also to clear infections and stuff like that. But again, you don't, as a beginner, you don't want to start with that. You don't want to open like this entire box of worms that you're not able to handle, which is why the jade egg is a very recommended um, dark green fried jade. I call it the dark green nephrite J because of uh, its properties of being very uh, deeply yin in its vitality and it's quite safe to begin with. And once you start working with this, once you, you, know, you, you, you start practicing this throughout, um, I don't know, several times, then you can think of moving on to other stones. Maybe, you know, then by yourself, another a, a rose one, you know, but, which is all about self-love. But also the roast, uh, rose uh, egg, yoni egg uh, is also, uh, you have to be careful with the source, as I say, because it's very fragile crystal. It has planes inside. You can always see through it as well. 
when you see um, a rose quartz and it is not as um, dense um, as the jade egg so you have to be careful with what you are using and uh, where you're using be careful while buying buy from uh, reliable sources because i i came across some articles where um i found out that in in china or in some other places in the world where they sell the fake ones they use actually chemical dyes to enhance the colors and things like that so you don't want that yeah so I'm going to um, look at some comments. Neha is here. So um, let me know how you're feeling so far. Is, 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 is it being useful? Um, do you find this useful? Do you have any um, questions? Or I'm curious to know, those of you who have it, I know Belle, you have it. What, which, one, which stone do you have? Is that a jade or, or a rose quartz? Or which one do you have? And for beginners, what I like to say is um, to begin with medium size. So this is a medium sized one. Um, so how do I show how big it is? Yeah. <laughs> so this is a drilled medium size. So there is a hole here. I think for the beginners, it's good to have the hole so you, you, you can play with it. <laughs> but yeah, this is a medium size. and. Um, some of you may think like, oh my God, like when I first held it, I was like, oh my God, this is so heavy. I don't think it can go inside and stay there. And am I going to be able to walk with it <laughs> and things like that? But um, you get used to it. So, and why I say this is because uh, medium size is good for you is because um, like with any, it's kind of a weight, yes, that goes inside your yoni. So uh, like with any weight training, uh, <laughs> Um, you begin with smaller weight. You just don't go for like 10 kilos straight away when you have never worked out. So you don't want to enjoy those muscles that is inside of you. So you begin with a medium weight, a uh, medium size, and then uh, some women go for um, large size. And I have a medium and a large one. Where is the large one? Anyway, um, I have a large one, but I still like to use the medium one. I, I feel like I can... Um, use my muscles much more uh, with the medium one um i know for some women um who have um who suffer with different kind of um problems with their vagina um, a medium one can be also very hurtful to insert for some women who have postpartum um uh, after you begin to use medium one you can start using a large one so it all depends, um, you know, because there is no one size fits all vagina kind of thing. So, but um, this is a very safe one to begin with for all those curious, skeptical ones. <laughs> yeah, Belle, I have a Canadian nephrite jadeg. Exactly, I have. This is also a Canadian um, jadeg, and then obsidian egg larger. Mm -hmm. I'm glad, Laura, you're finding it useful. Yeah, Amanda. Yes, of course, yours is a jade. <laughs> This is fascinating. I'm learning so much. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. Can you say what you mean by practices? Yes, Kathy. Um, I was going to come to that. I, I'm going to come to that in, in a second. Um, yeah. So yeah, so this is a Canadian nephrite jade egg, a medium-sized drill. So um, for those of you who are interested, you can purchase it from me as well. If you come to my workshops then you or retreat, then it is also part of that. Um, and um, I, I buy it from a reliable source and I charge it before I send it to any of the sisters. So um, yes, it is a reliable source, I can say um so i'll talk more about it after the class or towards the end so what is a practice kathy asked so you see a lot of people get confused with jade eggs and kegels and this was one of the questions that somebody sent to me earlier today is that how is it different from kegels huh? so um kegels is pretty much um some pelvic floor exercises so that's pretty much it is Yes, it's, it's pelvic floor exercises that, it, that means squeezing and um, breathing and all of that, some movement involved. And you can do Kegels um, when you are in the, in the 
queue in the in the grocery or you are driving or waiting in the traffic uh, you can do these things kegel exercises then and there it, it requires like really subtle attention once you get into the practice why I call JDEC to be a different um, different practice, uh, a different thing altogether, is because of its very sacred nature. Um, it is a spiritual practice because this you when you work with JDEC, it's different from Kegels because you are working with a healing crystal, and um, it requires it requires more attention and intention than just trying to do that while waiting in the queue or waiting in the traffic or in the shower or something like that i know some of the um, some of the people who teach this out there they say that oh take a jdeg and uh, and use it in the shower and put it in in the shower and you know and you're done and then you can go about your day i know for so many women that i have worked with it does not work this way and i'll tell you why it does not work because it's in a way you're putting this inside your yoni you have to respect that fact that if your yoni is even ready for it i know so for so many of us um, you take the stone and you go into a practice but the yoni is not ready for it she will not want it and here is where our um, a lot of a uh, lot of emotions come up for women because how many times have you not respected the boundary of, of this sacred portal that you have. So for me, Jade Egg is a very spiritual practice that you actually dedicate time to and do it in a ritualistic way so that you get into the flow, you get into the flow with the intention and, and then you, you slowly, slowly open up to it. So what do I mean by practice? Uh, Let me read Amanda's comment. I was surprised how quickly my muscles toned up and kept my egg inside me when I walk it walk. It didn't at first. Yes, I'm so proud of you, Amanda. Amanda was one of the um, one of the ones that I was I had the honor of initiating uh, into this process. So I'm glad that it's working for you. It's just not only to tone the muscles, um, Angela. There is a there is a deeper connection to it. But let me um, talk about practice. So, as I said, this egg is placed in inside your vagina. So the, this is pretty much the practice. But what exactly is the physical practice is that you you move it in such a way that it massages it massages different muscles around the zones of your um, vagina. It involves. The practice involves your awareness, your intention, breath work, subtle movement, sound as well. So it, it requires a sequence and you don't have to do it like, like step five steps, but it is pretty much setting the space, setting the intention, getting into some pelvic floor um, exercises um, through breath work, movement, squeezing, and then allowing this jade egg to also breast massage and then allowing this jade egg to to go inside your vagina and and then performing continuing performing those um this um exercises there are a couple of exercises that are just enough to begin with you don't have to go crazy the taoism teaches over 20 30 practices but which all, i haven't done all of them as well but to begin with that's all is required and why why is it required um so as um, Angela asked, is it just to tone the muscles? No. Your yoni has reflexology points, just like your foot. So at the back of your foot, you know, when you go to a reflexologist and you see all those pressure points that marks, you know, this is the heart, this is the head, this is the kidney, da da da, whatever. Similar way, your yoni has all of those reflexology points right from the, the entrance to to in inside so so if I show so let's say like if this so you put the, the bigger end of the egg in okay because the drilled one is with your um, string attached and you try to put it in so when you put this thing in 
this is when it starts to massage the the points around and even in the yoni you have reflexology points like the points for kidneys the liver the spleen the heart uh, and heart is very much close to your um, g spot pretty much and when you practice intentionally it activates vitality in those organs in your body as well so this is just not a woo woo but it's a kinesthetic approach to activating our life force energy in those parts of our body. So it's just not push-ups for the vagina like the kegels. It actually goes in and um, activates those parts of our body, um, uh, organs of our body. It also does is that um, it recognizes uh, trapped emotions as well. Of course, it helps us to um, experience more pleasure. When you have intercourse after that, you experience more pleasure. It also helps you to tone um, the muscles because a lot of women I know suffer from um, what do you call this um, this symptom continence it's this the, the leaky vagina symptom it's called but that's when like when you jump or when you sneeze or when you laugh like there's 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 a leak um, uh, there's a leak and that's that it helps to tone the muscles so you can prevent this leak toned vaginal muscles pelvic muscles also helps you prevent leaking of energy your energy leakage too very important to um to cultivate um energetic boundaries as well um it also helps you to reduce menstrual cramps so a regular use of the JREC helps you to reduce menstrual, menstrual uh, cramps. And um, you know about orgasms, like there's so many studies about like how women do not really know what orgasm is. We break it because we, and we want to act like something and we want to sound like something. And we do not differentiate between orgasm and climax. Uh, climax is when, uh, when you when you come to this point of you know the heightened sensitivity and you feel like wow you know and then and then um you come and and climax is when the energy drops after that but when you are orgasmic your energy does not drop that's how you can differentiate this orgasmic energy when you reach this heightened state it stays with you for quite some time and this is also the process of sex magic a lot of um People who have um, practiced and are in advanced stages can do what is called sex magic, magic which is about thinking about your intentions and, and bringing these energies to your um, crown chakra to, to manifest, to, to send those uh, high vibrational energy because the orgasmic energy is an extremely, is the highest um vibration or that exists <laughs> no wonder like any when you're when you are climb when you're orgasming every single person thinks about or says god or whatever in any language you want to come this is that is the connection to the divine and that's what they use in the sex magic as well besides that there are also um several benefits in terms of well-being as i said it helps to Send life, activate life force energy in those organs in our body, which is really important for us women, because it um because of the adrenals, the level of adrenals that we live with is not very um, conducive to the female anatomy, which is why we feel burnt out and overwhelmed and all of that. Also, as we age, the the level of hormonal production in our body also um, decreases. And um, this is why for women, it is important to learn these kind of practices, you know, about our internal anatomy, those energy practices, our pelvic floor, all of that, so that we can continue to maintain those hormonal balance. Um, yeah. And um, there are several other benefits. Let me read some comments here. Is it used for, used for pleasure too? Yes, Amy, of course. <laughs> yes, um, in fact, this is one of the best ways to, to self-pleasure, I would say, um, than using a vibrator or a dildo or whatever. This is one of the really beautiful ways that um, to create this, um, what do you call this, um, 
sacred retreat for yourself and you know have this experience of experiencing pleasure um experiencing your body and of course um if you if i go into very details of the practice it begins with breast massage because um the breast is a positive polarity and, and the yoni is a negative polarity so when we when we massage our breasts it kind of eases our our yoni so it becomes easier for it to just relax so so it is a very beautiful ritual to to have for yourself for self pleasure as well so of course pleasure <laughs> So I don't know, uh, Amy, what me medication you are in and if it is specifically related to uh, vaginal health or reproduction or what. Um, um, so I I'm not sure about that and I don't want to give you any medical prescription here because um, I'm not qualified for that. Um, but um, let's talk uh, outside of this because I would like to know more in detail what medication do you take and what are the different side effects and how it's going on because it's, it's a very case by case and also how you feel about it. Um, um, now, you know, also the vaginal um, dryness is a very big issue among women. These infections and the fibroids and all of that is a very big issue among women that no one talks about. Um, we even feel embarrassed and the thing is that when um, throughout your periods, the entire cycle of your moon, 28 days and month after month, it is very normal for you to have this vaginal dryness or infection, all of that. It's quite a normal thing, but yes, no one talks about that. When you regularly practice um, this, this J egg, it also helps in lubrication of your yoni. And it creates those liquids that, that are important, that are vital for its own health. So you don't have to apply any vaginal dryness cream. Please don't do that. That just kills the sensitivity of your vagina. So please don't do that. And um, as I said, because of the how the yoni is um, uh, with the reflexology points, I will actually look out look out for uh, any picture if I can find with the reflexology point that goes through the vaginal canal. So you can have a look. It's quite interesting and fascinating. It's like massaging the body from within. You know, we give ourselves massage from outside, but this is like massage from within, huh? And finally, it also helps you to tone your facial skin. You know, um, a, good, a good facial is, is a consequence of a toned pelvic muscle. <laughs> so, so there are plenty of benefits. Antidepressants, yes, sister, go for it. If you're on antidepressants, go for the JDX. I think any, any, any practitioner would tell you that. So, so, for, so how do you use this? So pretty much um, to begin with, you sterilize it in hot water for um, for 10 minutes. So just, just put it in a cup, drop this and let it sterilize. And then you, and you know, for those of you who, who will have the drilled one, here is where you use the, you put in the string. Now, what I like to recommend is to use like, um, what do you call it? a floss. So I have, uh, an, uh, and, and be careful with what kind of floss you buy, because a lot of dental floss uh, in the market are, first of all, um, what do you call it, flavored. <laughs> you don't want mint flavored string going in and you know <laughs> tingling your vagina like that. Um, so that may not be a really good experience, maybe, but I would not suggest that. The main thing to look out for is fluoride. Now, um, a lot of dental floss have fluoride in them. This is one chemical to avoid and run away from. I do not recommend fluoride, uh, use of fluoride in any ways, let alone vagina. It, it desensitizes your, your vagina. It calcifies your intuition. You don't want that. One of the other things you can do is charge it under the full moon. Um, so, so that the crystals can um, recalibrate, as I like to say. And I like to put it in my altar and I just like to have it. Um, a lot of those um, sisters who already have it and are not using it and they're curious and they just like think that, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Should I, should I not? You can start building a relationship with your jade egg already. When you have 
I just Google when to use after three months. Yes. So for for those who have recently given birth, first of all, you should not use this um, if you're pregnant. Um, and if you have recently given birth, you have to wait between three to six months and it depends on how how fast you're recovering because everybody's recovery time is also different. And and uh, you don't use this uh, during menstruation as well. You can use this um, during sex. So you can have it and still have sex. I have not tried it, but I have to, I've been told um, <laughs> by many that they have tried it and some people like it, some people don't like it. I don't. <laughs> so. Yes, um, Angela, yes, it helps in the Kundalini awakening because, because of the, um, the movement exercises that you do once this is in. So it definitely helps in activating, uh, releasing the serpent energy. Yes, thank you for asking that. So for those of you who already have and are, are scared to use or don't have time to use or can't wait to use like Belle, <laughs> you can start uh, building your relationship with this. Um, infuse your intentions, whatever intention you have. And what I always suggest is to sleep with it before you begin to use it. It's a very beautiful way of energizing and infusing your intentions into this. And uh, in, even in Taoism, because of the high vibrational healing properties of um, the jade egg, it is also considered that um, it acts as an antidepressant pretty much if you just sleep with it under your pillow. So that's, you know, sometimes I don't feel like using it. My yoni is saying no, so I have to listen. I cannot violate that. So I am listening and um, my mind says that, oh my God, I haven't done the jade egg. I should be doing the jade egg. This is what I teach. I should do it. But the yoni says, no, not ready. No, not now. Maybe not. So those are the times where I sleep with it under my pillow. I, I infuse it, I say my intention, and it is still working for you. It is, after all, a healing crystal. So the way as um, to do it is, as I said, like I like doing things in rituals. Of course, it requires you to create space and time. Um, to begin with, I would suggest to create like a 30 minutes time. Give yourself like a good 30 minutes. It's the minimum. 30 minutes is the minimum. Um, to create this safe space, you can do it in the mornings or you can do it in the evenings. Um, I personally prefer to do it in the evenings so that um, I can sleep with it. So it lasts longer with me. Um, but you can do it in the morning. Um, one of the things is that when you begin to use it, when you first try to use it, it is really important to let go of any agendas. Maybe. To, to the, maybe it will not go in. Maybe the yoni will say no. So it's very important to let go of any agenda of I have to get it in today. <laughs> how to feel it or how to do it right, which steps to follow. Da, da, da. There's a lot of like mind can be talking and talking. So let go of any agenda, which is why I recommend being initiated under someone else's instructions so that you're not caught in the mind of what steps to follow next. This worked very well for me and for the ones that I have shared and who have shared with me back. So, as I said, that if your yoni says no, no means a no. We've been violated down there several times by our partners, by, by doctors, by even by ourselves. So it's really important to honor that. You know, there will be, once you start sleeping with it, infusing your intention, there will be a day you will be like, yes, I think today, tonight is the time. I think I am ready. So that has to happen organically for you. You cannot put logic into this. So um, to begin with, I'm gonna see any comments. Great idea, Belle. <laughs> is there any other way to charge it other than full moon also? What would be a good intent when to give it when charging? Yeah, you can, um, well, you know, you can, Full moon is a really good way to use the moon's energy, but you can even put back into the earth um, where after you have sterilized it, you can put back into the earth um, and just leave it because it comes from the earth after all, yeah? So you just leave it and um, say a little prayer. 
a small prayer to a, a, a gratitude maybe. I like to give gratitude when I'm cleansing it, when I'm cleaning it. Like, thank you for, thank you for giving me what exactly, or thank you for showing me, thank you for healing me, thank you, whatever it is. So I like to offer that. You can leave it in the, on the earth for some time and then come back and sterilize it again and have it with you when you want to use it. So you can use charged crystals like that as well. Um, how long should you keep it inside for the first timers? Um, really good question. Um, I have experienced for many women that the first timers, um, it doesn't stay inside very long by itself, which is why um, I recommend you to do it in the evening before going to bed and um, just, just put it in. Even if you don't know any practices or any exercises to do with it, just put it in for the first timers and sleep with it. In the morning, you can take out, and I will explain how to take it out. But not more than that. Again, as I said, that this is this is a weight that you're gonna put inside, so you don't want to, you know, um, put a lot of pressure on those muscles by having it inside for too long. But sleeping with it is, I think, a very gentle uh, process where you can wake up and um, remove it. Um, the maximum I have gone in with this is two days uh that's because i forgot <laughs> it was there i did not use the string and i forgot it was there um yeah i do not recommend that i think 24 hours is the maximum because you don't want to overwork those muscles those muscles need to relax as well da, da, da. i'm going to read angela's even after the floss broke mine has been lying on the altar does that mean that it doesn't want to work with me Um, as I said, you, you got to start infusing your intentions. You got to start sleeping with it to see when is the right time for you. Uh, only you will know when is the right time to you. And again, this cannot be done with your head. You have to follow your intuition and your, your guidance, Angela, here. Yeah, this is a really interesting question, Amy. I'm worried that I, it would get stuck and, and the string breaks. Yes. That was my concern when I was in, in first initiated, um, when the teacher asked, does anyone have any questions? And I was like, yes, what if it just gets stuck and lost and never comes out? Oh my God, I did not realize, I did not understand the female anatomy at that time. If you look it up, there is no way for, first of all, it to get stuck or lost anywhere. It will come out. <laughs> Now, how it comes out is a technique if, if you are not if you're not able to pull it out through a string. But because of the nature of your anatomy, um, the, the pelvic floor, it cannot get lost. It cannot just go and get stuck anywhere. It, it will flow down. One of the easiest ways to <laughs> then having to explain to the emergency room, no, you can do it, sister. <laughs> so one of the easiest way to then bring it out if the string has broken is you just sit down on the floor, squat, and then push pretty much. So you just, so for those of you who have given birth, you will know, so this is the process of like squat down and just push, exhale, <laughs> squeeze and exhale. And, and you will feel the stone coming down slowly, slowly, slowly until it reaches and it just comes up. It will come out. There is no way it is stuck and lost in that world. It doesn't happen. <laughs> I have slept with mine. Yes, it is safe. I think this is one of the safest things to sleep with it. Um, it's doing its work anyways, Emma. Uh, Amanda, thanks for <laughs> confirming. It is really easy. <laughs> it's not going to get lost. I know I was really scared as well. So um, you begin with um, you know, um, creating a sacred space. And um, it, uh, following a series of practices, maybe light some can uh, candles, you know, make the environment for this space. Um, tell people in your house, if you have family and kids and father, husband, like, I need this time. Can you please give me this time? I need this time. And, you know, I sometimes tell my husband when he's around and I want to do this practice, I just tell him, like, I just need some time, please don't come to the bedroom right now. And he asked me a few times, what are you doing? I was like, please don't come, it's just my time. I just want to just 
do things by myself. <laughs> okay, so create the time. So it begins with um, taking some, some oil and you begin to massage, put some nice music, if whatever suits you, some sensual music or some um, devotional music or some sacred music, whatever at that time suits you. Uh, sensual music is good, um, good because then you relax. And then you begin to massage your breasts. And again, go as you as you feel like, massage your breasts. Uh, after you've done massaging your, your breasts with your hands, you can use the stone to, to start massaging the breasts. So what happens is that when you're doing this, um, the stone quickly adapts to your body's temperature. So it's not like cold. And um, you, can, you can massage it over your womb, your kidneys, and, and use some oil, um, as well as um, use some oil for um, in and around your yoni, give it a, a little bit of massage. Then you take this, the, the, the stone on the tip of the yoni, and you pretty much like do gentle circular moment, movements, pretty much. And what I like to call it is as a stripping, uh, sorry, not stripping, <laughs> sipping exercise, where you just sip, do a sipping breath. So like, <sighs> so if you do with me, when you sip, inhale, you squeeze your yoni. When you exhale, you relax the muscle. Inhale, squeeze, relax. So that's the movement you do as you are Sipping, it's sipping, 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 and then uh, there comes a point that you feel like it's ready to go in, and then you just give a gentle push, and it falls down. I mean, it goes inside you, and um, that's pretty much like in very briefly explained um, how it is done. And then you do a certain set of exercises which requires squeezing of those muscles, which requires like moving your hips um, so that your uh, pelvic floor gets activated. So that's pretty much um, like in a very small nutshell how it is used. <laughs> I did that. I felt like a hen laying an egg. I know, Emma. I know. It just it felt when when I do that, it feels really funny. <laughs> yeah, it is like that. <laughs> so um, once you have used it. Then uh, I like to clean it. So again, use hot water. I like to sometimes put some essential oil uh, in the hot water and leave it in the cup of hot water, like two drops of lavender oil or tea tree oil is good or apple cider vinegar. I don't like to use apple cider vinegar because then it smells of apple cider vinegar, but I like lavender to just, um, just two, two drops of it. Now, um, one thing to remember is that when you use for the first time, it may fall out or um, because it is not the right size probably for you or or probably it just did not feel safe. Now, um, there are like two situations in particular when you have your um, yoni egg inside of you where it may come out. And situation is pretty much when your boundary is violated. And now this is something that is an internal thing. You know, when you have an, uh, this empowering situation, and if you have that in, it may come out. And, um, and this is fine. It's just uh, a recognition. I like to use it as a recognition. So it takes time. I would not advise you if you are a newbie to put it in and go shopping. It's a really wrong thing to do because... Um, you know, when you're in the crowd, you have all this mishmash of energy, somebody pushes you, you're just like, mm -mm. it may just come out. And it has happened to me. It has happened to me when I was in Sainsbury's and it, it came out. It, I mean, not came out. I knew it was coming out. I literally knew. So I ran to the toilet. <laughs> I told my, and I felt like a hen giving, <laughs> laying an egg for real. <laughs> I told my husband, I need to go right now. <laughs> and I left. So. A boundary was violated, an energetic boundary was violated in me, which I didn't recognize. Um, so other times it may come out is um, when you're drinking alcohol and you have it inside of you. Again, a boundary is violated there. So these are the times it may fall out. Al although I know a woman who, uh, one of my uh, clients, she wore it for an interview. And because she wanted to fail her magnetism, and, you know, she was like, yes, I can take over the world. 
and she went for an interview and, and gave her presentation and it all went so again you have to get used to it and now i can go out and i, I feel comfortable and but in the beginning i wasn't able to do that so again it's a practice so i think i spoke a lot and we have passed an hour okay i am here to take any questions if you have Emma, really interesting. Um, so I wanted to um, say three things. Can you charge them by uh, them on selenite bars? Yes, that's a really good idea. Amy, yes, you can do that. Um, three things. If you want to purchase um, nephrite jade egg, which is medium sized drilled, I have um, quite a few of them right now. I'm happy to post it to you. Um, the price is 40 pounds. That includes postage. Next week, we are traveling to Avalon. We are going to Glastonbury. Those of you who are joining us for the Open to Receive retreat, um, we will be doing a JDEC initiation during as part of the retreat. So it's quite fun. We have two places remaining if any one of you are last minute on the fence and want to join. One of the things that I will be doing is taking all of these Yoni eggs because I have a collection of it for sale not for use but for sale i hope to have a collection good collection for use too soon <laughs> so i will be taking all of these eggs um to the to the chalice wells water and uh, i will be uh, cleaning and charging them there so those of you who want to purchase it from me from me have the opportunity to get it um charged there as well from me so that's not that's that's the second thing yeah, first thing you can buy from me. <laughs> Second thing is, yeah, if you feel like um, joining us for the Open to Receive retreat, then um, in Glastonbury, which is also a sacred site for the Magdalene lineage, and Magdalene um, uh, initiations were also part of JDA initiations. I mean, JDA's initiation part was also part of Magdalene. Anyway, she taught that too. So we, we're going to journey there. Um, third thing that I want to say for those of you who are in London, I will be offering a, a jade egg workshop in May and this will be a whole day. I think it will be from 10 to 4. So we will um, we will begin with all of those practices. I'll share all the series of practices that you can do. We'll, we'll open up the gateways, the portals, and we will go through a jade egg initiation process. I have never done this before, but I feel like because so many of you asked me um, and I feel like why not? Um, I'm happy to offer that and, and for those of you who are interested look at the event section in this group and you will find the details there if you want to join us um, and again uh, if you are joining us in, in the retreat or in this uh, one day workshop then you will find you will get this as part of your registration obviously. and um, I also wanted to share that um, soon, I also am feeling called to release an online um, um, series of videos and um, these will be not available on public platforms for the reasons that I get banned from time to time. So these will be private videos that I am I, planning to shoot next month, which will include sequence of practices to, uh, to, to use Jade Egg as a spiritual practice. So I will include um, um, a sequence of videos to explain how to use Jade Egg, what kind of practices to do once it's inserted. So these are pretty much the movement and the breath work that you can do. For those of you who are interested, also drop me a comment. It's, this will be online, so you can take it from anywhere. You don't have to be in London or the UK, uh, or you can be. <laughs> um, yeah, so I will I will um, let you know once those are ready and released so you can have these videos as a guide. Um, not much of it is available um, online and also not much of it is reliable. So it is really important that you trust the sources that from where you get any of the information as well as the product. So let me read some. Thank you, Amanda, for recommending. <laughs> I miss you. Can you charge the message first? Amy, when will your next retreat be after that one, Amy? So 
So th this one is happening in um, March for the International Women's Day weekend. Um, the one day workshop in London is in May and our final um, long retreat is going to be in October, um, which is the um, Reclaim the Power of the Dark Feminine, which Amanda, you attended and um, it was an amazing experience. So we will be doing work there. Noreen says it had been recommended to me to put it on to do this healing and it would come out when it had done the healing. So go with that awareness. But if it comes out, that means that's what it is required. As I feel like you have to build a relationship with this egg so much that you feel that the egg is guiding you, not you guiding the egg. So many times it will come out. Like I used to get frustrated that I spend sometimes half an hour doing this setting up and rituals and practice and da da da, and then it comes out in half an hour. You know? So I was like, what the hell? <laughs> but um, you have to trust. You have to trust that you receive at any moment how much ever you are required to receive. So there is no loss and there is nothing that you're missing out on but you receive exactly what you are ready for in that moment. When I quickly went to the bathroom, I then fell out when I was dancing at a bar. I had one. Yes, yes, I, I explained the story of the Saints, which I was so glad that I was wearing jeans. You will never see me wearing jeans. And I was so happy that day that I was wearing jeans because it didn't fall off. But you know, um, as I said, that this is an energetic boundary issue when it comes out, um, like suddenly. You know? So, so it usually happens in public places when there, where there are like lots of um, mixed energy. And if you are especially an empath or a sensitive soul, then um, please don't do that in public places. Would love to come to the London workshop if I can. Yes, Belle. <laughs> I can't wait to meet you. Please plan a trip to the US as well. Urmila, you've got to come to London. No. <laughs> okay. Is the London workshop in Blackheath? No, Kathy. This workshop is in Covent Garden uh, in May, on the 19th of May. It's a Sunday in Covent Garden, Neil's Yard. Da -da. Will you be back to the UK by then, by the way? So we'd love to have you. <laughs> So sisters, I don't see any comments or questions here. Um, we are past an hour. I think I can just talk and talk and talk. <laughs> so I will leave. If you have any questions, if you have any um, inquiries, drop it here. I will make separate posts with, again, instructions on how to buy and instructions or on where and how you can experience this with me uh, feel free to jump in um, if, if if your yoni is feeling like yes ready this is the moment i want to expand my consciousness towards this then yes please come along let's play and um i um i know it is a vulnerable thing to to talk openly to to share i i love holding space for um for this topic because it has been um, very fulfilling in my life to have used this um, coming back to my my own sovereign self. So um, I am always glad to hold space for women and always glad to create a safe space for women to, to dive into this vulnerable topic. So we will play together in a very much fun and um, sensitive and raw and crazy way so if you want to join us yes do that um for those of you who can wait for the videos please wait it will only come towards the end of march um yeah and those who want to buy i will post the link so if there are no more questions um da -da -da. you're welcome kathy i'm going to inbox you yes inbox me I'm glad, Urmila, I'm so happy. <laughs> All right, time to go. It's quarter past eight, 8.15 PM here in London, and it's time for me to go.
close my work for today. <laughs> Thank you for being such a lovely um, company throughout here. You kept it all interactive and I'm sure the sisters watching, reading and commenting have equally benefited. And for those who will be watching the replay, thank you so much. Have a nice rest of the day wherever you are. Bye.